What's up everyone, Nayman here with another Modern Meta Breakdown video. It's gonna be the last little wrap up of 2020. And instead of highlighting another Uro deck, since there are multiple that exist right now, you could do Sultai, you could do Teamer, you could even do that Omnath four color version of it. We're not gonna talk about those today because I'm sure you're sick of talking about Uro. We'll highlight Uro um, and that sort of powerhouse that has affected modern uh, when we do a recap episode coming out in january that just kind of talks about how the meta has shifted in transition but this episode is all about our heliod combo and kind of highlighting the collected company style of decks now this video is going to be a little bit different than previous ones because we're going to highlight two decks that are the same style, right? They're both Heliod combos, but there's two different ways that you can build it. And we'll talk about the differences with both of those and why you might wanna play one list over the other. So here's how this is gonna work. Down below, you can see just kind of wall of text as me talking about the different lists, which might seem overwhelming, but down below in the description, you can see a link to both of these lists so you can look at them yourself and kind of figure it out and follow along at home. I'm also gonna be throwing up in the corners over here, a little bit of image slideshow that kind of highlights uh, the differences between the two. So over on this side, over here, are cards that exist in both lists. Um, just common cards, they're powerful, they make a lot of sense, reasons why they're in there, we'll talk about those. And the cards over here, those are the ones that are unique per list. And we'll talk about it, um, why these lists are the way they are, what might be some of the reasons that you are choosing to run said list. Let me get my face in there a little bit more since now we got this wall of text below us. Um, so the Coco style of decks have progressed and changed over the years. We've highlighted it if you followed the channel and seen some of the other videos that we've done. We've kind of seen the progression and the change of these creature-based combo strategies um, that exist in modern. If you have played on arena or standard, then you know you're familiar with Heliod, right? He is kind of that life gain, super powerful um, god creature that exists, legendary enchantment, so he's indestructible, um, and he's kind of got the ability to turn from an enchantment into a creature if you have enough white devotion. You need five in order to switch him on and turn him into a 5 5 creature. But the abilities that he has on it is really the important thing we don't really care so much about him turning into a creature with this type of deck it's all about the payoff that he can provide which if you're wondering what that is it's all about that life gain whenever you gain life put a plus one counter on target creature or enchantment that you control and you can pay two mana one in a white and target creature gains life link until the end of turn now the payout with this is that you can use your walking ballista um and basically say, hey, Walking Ballista, you have at least two counters on you. Well, guess what? Now you have lifelink, and you can now deal infinite damage. That's that's the big payout card. I don't know if I've got a good... Well, you'll see it scrolling across over on the screen over that way. Um, so Walking Ballista is kind of that payout card. This is how we deal infinite damage. If you are familiar with the previous old versions of Coco Strategy, you could be able to sacrifice... Um, your madcap and be able to deal infinite damage. So this is basically speeding that up. We need less combo pieces where that one needed at least three pieces in order to sit there and deal infinite damage. You just need two pieces, a walking ballista with at least two counters and your Helion. And guess what? You can now start going off. They can still disrupt it because you know it's creature-based strategy, so that's why you have protection in there. Things like Giver of Runes, right? Target creature you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. So ways to kind of protect your combo from going off and killing somebody. So the objective is to basically get out a Walking Ballista, get out your Heliod. So you've got your ability to search for it with things like Ranger here, Ranger Captain Vios. You know, he was kind of our modern masters, or not modern masters, modern horizons. There we go, got there. Modern horizons card lets you search for a card that costs one or less creature. Of course, is gonna be the stipulation on this one. So you find that Walking Ballista because his converted mana cost is going to be zero with that double X in his converted mana cost there. Um, and then it's also got this nice added bonuses. You can sacrifice it and your opponent can't cast non-creature spells this turn. So if you're worried about your combo, guess what? You can protect it from non-creatures. 
So that's a nice little upside uh, to mess with your opponents there. So objective, get Walking Ballista out, get Heliod out, combo off, win. So you need the setup of saying, I should play a Heliod first, play Walking Ballista for two mana. So that means you're going to have to dump at least four into it and have two left over to be able to combo off. So it might be a turn after that, right? So you got to be worried about how that setup's going to go. Um, but it's easily manageable and doable based on how things go. With this list that I'm highlighting right now here, over here on the right, you can see kind of the difference uh, that we're talking about is the way that these strategies ramp and the way that they're paying out. Both of these lists are going to be using the walking ballistas. This second list that I'm kind of scrolling across here has giver of runes like the first one, right? It's got our, our ranger. It's got our skyclave apparition here. This new fangled powerhouse that we're seeing in white decks. Um, it's that banishing priest. I can get out there. I can exile something. And then if my skyclave leaves, then you get a token in response to it. The benefit of this one is you get to exile a non-land, non-token permanent uh, with converted mana cost four or less. So not just creatures. That's why this is important. You can get rid of enchantments. You can get rid of artifact. Oh, wait. Did it say non-enchantment? No, it just said non-token. I was like, wait a minute. Did I misspeak the whole time? No. So non-token, non-land. So that's planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, creatures. Lots of things that you are wanting to get rid of to help protect you. So both of these lists are running. This list over here on the right is running a few more not that big a deal. It's important to be having these and running these in these sort of green white strategies that are existing for this sort of cocoa or collected company style of decks. So protection, that's kind of where that falls in. Uh, same thing with kind of what our giver of runes is. It's, it falls into that protection category uh, of cards here. Now we've got our sort of go wide abilities that exist, right? Things like our Luminarch Aspirant here, he's our cleric that on this list, he's just going to give things plus one counters. So if you have this and you say, you know what, I now only need to have two mana dedicated to Walking Ballista and have two mana left over for my Heliod. If you have this lovely cleric hanging out on the battlefield. So you pay two mana, Walking Ballista comes out with a one counter on it. Guess what? Luminarch's hanging out here. Cleric says, hey, guess what? Here's another their plus one counter for my Walking Ballista. Then I will pay two mana off of my Heliod, and now my Walking Ballista can go to town, remove this one counter to deal one damage to you. Oh, but I have lifelink, so I'll gain a life, and now I'll add a plus one counter back onto Walking Ballista. Rinse and repeat, continue on until I deal infinite damage to you and gain infinite life. So just added in an, a nice little speed up to the progress and kind of kicks things up into a little bit of a higher gear uh, by adding this into this version of the list. Um, so it's a very much combo out, quick style of play for this one. Um, we'll talk about Conclave Mentor real quick because it is in both lists. Um, it's just kind of a win more. Uh, help you out kind of strategy. If one or more counters will be put on a creature you control, you add an extra one on there. And then, hey, if, guess what? If Mentor dies, you gain life. So again, that sort of comboing, how are we going to support our Heliod? And this is another addition to that. Speed things up, right? Gain life, more counters. Yes, yes, yes. I want to be doing all those things. One other thing, our champions in here, Orok Champion, another cleric, protection from black and red. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you gain life. So again, that life gain is important. More things that gain life synergize well with our Heliod, so we want more things like that. Also, the red and the black can be relevant when you're fighting down things like Death Shadow strategies, when you're fighting down things like uh, those Prowess decks or the Burn decks. So like, there's a lot of red and black stuff in Modern that's going to be scary. So having something there that is protected from it, that can be a blocker, uh, pr you know, protecting your life total so you can get into the combo, also gaining life off it, it's a good way to do it. Now, second deck to talk about over here, um, which maybe should have been the first since it's on the left, whatever, we're doing things differently. The ramp strategy for this is different than the one from the last one, and that's kind of the way that you are building your deck can now be a little bit different. This strategy is all about 
our Arbor Elf and our Utopian Sprawl. So Arbor Elf lets us untap a forest, Utopian Sprawl, we enchant this forest. Now this forest will allow us to make double mana essentially. So it kind of helps speed us up and as long as you're not fighting against people that are doing a lot of land destruction, then this strategy works out well. You are now kind of accelerating things a little bit more. By doing this, you are basically shaving down on things like your Noble Hierarch. Um, so that means that you're kind of missing out on um, going for that sort of one big creature. I'm just gonna poke in, get those Exalted triggers, go to town that way. So this sort of leads up to ramp payoff. Um, and by doing this forest strategy and being more towards green compared to the other list where you can look and see there's a lot more white kind of mana symbols on the right hand side of the screen over here, it allows you to have another way to kind of gain infinite life. Spike feeder exists. There used to be a combo that existed in Coco style of decks, Kiki style of decks uh, that was a spike feeder, an archangel of Thune, which basically did Heliod style, um, but for five mana. So it's like really expensive. Um, so spike feeder enters the battlefield. It's got two counters on it. Hey, we want two counters. That seems great. Uh, you can remove two counters by paying two mana, and you get to put a plus one counter on target creature. So you say, I'm remove one of these counters, paying two mana. I'm going to throw it over there on another creature. We don't really care about that. We care about removing one of our counters and gaining two life, which if you have Heliod, now you just gain infinite life because you just sit here and go, remove this counter, gain two life, put a counter on it, remove this counter, gain two life, remove this counter, gain two life, remove this counter, boom, 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 boom. Now you have infinite life. Can't kill your, per your opponent with infinite life, but hey, it'll draw it out as long as you're not playing against somebody that has infect, then you might have a chance to be able to win uh, and give you more time to buy into finding your walking ballista. This list over here on the left that ramps into things like spike feeder and stuff like that um, is, it's got the combo, but it's slower. It's taking its time. It's saying, I will, you know, take the longer route. I'm going to get there, but I don't need to rush there. So you'll see it's only running two walking ballistas in this list compared to the four in the other one where it's like, I'm comboing, you're going to die. I'm going to try to get you on turn four if I can and just like win. Um, so that's kind of the way it's going with this. We've got our mentor like we talked about. It's added in scavenging ooze, just sort of, hey, powerful creatures, graveyard hate might be relevant sort of thing. Our Skyclave, we know it's in there, but you have to adjust your numbers, right? That's kind of the thing about this list because you have this four spike feeder in here uh, to do that kind of infinite life gain strategy. And again, if you're sitting here and you decide, you know what, I've gained infinite life now. Now I'm just going to sit here and start pumping up all my other guys, right? You can be able to start dumping in your mana towards some of these other things. You Scavenging Ooze also gains life, so that's another reason why it's in here. Graveyard Hate, Life Gain. And you'll see those sort of strategies across the board for both the list and why they're running these sort of cards. Hey, it also synergizes with Heliod. Why would I not want to run it in here? So I personally am more of a fan of the second list. And that's kind of why I highlighted it first, because it's like, it's all in on the combo strategy, but it's quicker and you have more pieces to help smooth it out and make it more consistent. The second list that I talked about over here with our Utopian Sprawl, it's a little bit slower, but it's got that ramp so you can be like, all right, boom, let's speed up, let's go to town. If you have all the pieces, you can use the Utopian Sprawl to ramp out quicker, right? Say, okay, Utopian Sprawl, boom, on a forest, tap it for two mana. Cool, Arbor Elf, untap it. Now I've got two more mana. Four mana off of one land seems really good. So don't be you know, worried about the speed at this list with the Utopian Sprawl because you can still blow somebody out and just dump some stuff on the field and say, well, here's my Heliod, here's my Walking Ballista, let's go. I, I just now de dealt infinite damage to you. So it's both of these lists are built like old school company lists, which were our sacrificing our kitchen fangs sacrificing our madcap in order to gain infinite life or deal infinite damage but we've just removed those extra pieces right we no longer 
need a sack outlet. We no longer need a way to prevent us from getting counters on our stuff. Now it's just, I have these two pieces. I've got my Heliod, which is indestructible, so I'm not really worried about that going anywhere. Which So having a combo piece that is not going to be destroyed is really, really nice. Then all I need is that payout card, Walking Ballista here, right? That's infinite damage. First list allows me to be able to gain infinite life, kind of buy more time till I can get to the Walking Ballista or draw into my Ranger that will let me get my Walking Ballista. So I hope this made a little bit of sense about why you're running these cards, why they kind of work together, what this deck is trying to do. You can look at our sideboard and we'll highlight that briefly here for everybody kind of following along at home. And again, a lot of the sideboards that we see for these sort of decks are kind of that mix of like, I need to protect my combo, so I need to have ways to do that. I need to find ways to disrupt you somehow, and then green and white, there's limiting things that you can be able to do to disrupt certain players. Um, and then you've just sort of got those couple removal stuff, right? We see Path to Exile sitting in both people's uh, sideboard here, makes a lot of sense. It's a powerful card, we kind of want a little bit of removal just in case. Um, Veil of Summer is in both lists, that protection we were talking about makes a lot of sense um dampening sphere is that disruption again you know just these different ways to be able to do it but one thing i do want to highlight here is these chokes that are running around in both players lists when there's so much uro running around and everyone's running blue so they can draw extra cards gain life play more lands shutting down some of their lands is very important so highlighting those again removal with our skyclave hanging out in there um, you know, I do like the guy's blessing in this list. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but overall, it's like how you want to disrupt your opponents, where you want to go for things. We've got some graveyard hate uh, hanging out in the second list because second list does not have our scavenging ooze in there. But, you know, there's also our Eidolon in, in this list. Again, sideboards can easily be tweaked based on the meta that you're playing in. And if you know that people around you aren't playing certain strategies, don't build your sideboard for a huge meta. If you're not going to a big tournament, you don't need something like a, let's say, a guy's blessing or something like that, right? You don't need that in your list, all right? You can decide, oh, I don't need that. If you know there's no graveyard-based strategies at your shop, nobody's playing control, no one's got Snapcaster mages, no one's playing dredge, right? No one's doing anything in their graveyard, maybe I don't need the lantern. Maybe I can be able to sneak in something else, right? And so you can adjust your, your strategies accordingly. But I hope that was at least a good breakdown for people about those two lists um, and why they work the way they work, why you might want to play one over the other. I mean, here's the images up at the top for you guys to kind of keep an eye at and look at. Again, the links to both the deck lists are going to be in the description down below. Um, if you're wondering, we still got kind of podcast stuff coming out. Um, there's going to be more modern um, content coming out over the new year. We'll kind of do a, a wrap up of what 2020 was like for the meta so you guys can be able to kind of get an idea of what has happened how things have changed what decks have adjusted risen or fallen over the kind of the course of the year there but if you like the content please consider hitting that subscribe button following along to the channel and other sort of cool stuff that we've got going on but that's going to do it for this episode guys thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next game hey everyone nan man here I'm a StarCraft 2 and Magic the Gathering content maker and commentator. This channel is going to be dedicated to all things Magic the Gathering. You can expect monthly videos about the modern meta. You can also be able to see Magic the Gathering stuff online, MTG Arena, as well as vlogs and other different styles of Magic content in addition to our commentary that we do of the modern scene. So make sure you guys are hitting that follow button to see when we go live next.